Hi everyone, welcome back to our Substance Painter to Maya tutorial. So, um, last lesson we went through the nuts and bolts and how Substance Painter worked and how to bring your Maya objects into Substance Painter and how to export them back. Um, so we're gonna, gonna go ahead back into this and start to um, work with Substance Painter and just paint it from the ground up. Um, so what I did is I actually jumped online, just kind of looked at uh, Team Fortress's uh, engineer, so this is what this guy's based off of, just so I can get some reference. And I just am using this as my reference. I think that what I'm gonna use is the, the red and brown scheme for the engineer. Um, so if you guys want to follow along and use, uh, use the same scheme, that's fine, it's up to you. I'm just gonna be using this as an example to kind of move forward. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start out with the bigger bits, um, which is going to basically be his coveralls. Um, so what I'm going to do is pick a material, since I already baked this from last lesson, I'm not going to go through that again. Um, so the material that I'm going to want to use, um, I actually have underneath my regular materials, because I went on to Substance Painter's uh, materials share area, and they actually have some pretty good ones here that we can just use. Um, so these are different from your smart materials, but they operate the exact same way. So if you, you'll see over here on your shelf, they look the same. It's just when you import them, you'll just go to file, import resources. You'll add your resource here. And once it's been added, it'll ask you what kind of resource it is. And you just say you want it to be added to your shelf and you want it to be added as a texture. And then it will pop in here. Okay. So that's the one, two punch for on that. Um, now I'm going to use the, the denim for his coveralls here. Um, so I'll just go ahead and drop that, this one? Yes, this one. I'll just drop this one on here. Okay. So those uh, fabric pieces are uh, way too thick, so we need to adjust that if we're going to use the denim. Um, let's see if we can scale, which I see there's a scale option here. If I scale this, you can see it makes it to where the denim pieces are much closer together. That we can work with that. Okay. Also, if I'm looking over at you know my my source here um, or my reference, I can tell that this needs to be darker. So I'm gonna come down here and say, okay, denim color. Um, now I can click this little. Um, dropper here and actually go over to my reference that I have. It's on a different screen, so I'm going to go over there. You don't have to be able to see it. Um, but it'll let me pick the actual color so that's fairly accurate to the reference. So right in there is the color that they're using. Okay. It looks like it's a little bit darker, though. Like it has a little more brown in it. So I'm actually going to, even though that was, let's see if I can actually pick a different one. Let's go with, that's a bit better. I think that the color on that one picture was just had a little bit too much purple in it. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, now I need to put a mask on here so that I can actually tell it where this is supposed to be at and it's not on everything. So right mouse button on here, I'll go to add black mask and I'm just gonna start painting the areas that have it. And I'm gonna be painting it a little bit sloppy um, and I'll clean it up afterwards. So I'm gonna use the brackets, um, make it to where your brush size will be bigger or smaller. Um, so brackets on the right, brackets on the left shrink, brackets on the right make them bigger. So I'm just going to paint this whole area here. And like I said, I'm painting kind of sloppy because I'm going to just erase the areas that I need to. But I just want to block in everything that is going to have this on here. So we'll say all this right here. Okay, that's all good. inside one of the model pieces. That is one of the, the problems of painting with the explosion models is that sometimes you end up inside the pieces and then you have to kind of go around like, all right, well, that's not working. Uh, it's a little bit late, but I could also turn on mirroring. Oh, but it's going to mirror because I have the explosion over here, so it's going to find the wrong center. So we won't use mirroring actually. Okay, just paint around here. That's good. And then he has these straps here that are also denim. So just kind of paint right over that. Paint over those. That's good. My brush 
actually a lot bigger. Hanging all over this area in here. So that's good enough for his denim. Now I could do the cleanup right away, but I could also wait on doing the cleanup. And instead of doing that right away, I can actually move on to a different material. And sometimes writing over the material with another one makes to where the other material underneath just goes away. Sometimes the normal bleeds through, which makes it to where you have to go through and erase it. Um, but if we're going over the top, it'll make it to where I don't necessarily have to do that. Um, so let's see here if I have a different material I can use besides denim for his shirt material. So maybe fabric ruffle line, that might be good for his shirt. Let's take a look at that. Okay, let's bring the scale up. That looks pretty good. Okay, and that could be his red shirt. So I'll pick down here underneath the color. I'm gonna pick my, my color dropper and we'll go back over here. That's the one of the reds. Let's see about this one over here. That's better right there. Okay, so that's good. Let's go ahead and uh, paint in his shirt as well. So again, we'll do a black mask. And since this one's on top, it'll make it to where I'm painting at. We'll hopefully paint right over. So let's see here. So I paint right here. You can see how it's just going right over the top of the denim. This is where I have to be a little more careful. So rather than going through and erasing one, I can just be careful with this one, and that'll make it to where I don't have to go back. So that's good. Got a little bit on this one right here. Oops. Come down here, get the rest of his shirt before I start work on the details in that other spot. Oh, got a little bit over there. Let's just erase that really quick. And by race, what I'm really doing is just kind of just deciding where the mask is on this. So it's kind of a little bit of a different approach to painting rather than erasing everything. I'm just using masks that control everything. And that makes it to where, you know, you can copy masks, you can edit masks, and it makes it to where you can do some, some things really quickly. And then if you don't like them, you can change the colors and use the mask to help preserve those masked off areas and just uh, template and um, adjust your design as you go without having to redo anything since the mask will preserve the areas that need to be covered. You can take masks and copy them from one layer to another. They're super versatile and once you have them set up it accelerates your final workflow to be if you are went one way and your art director said uh, I don't like the way that looks, can we use a different material or a different color? Rather than having to repaint everything you can just swap that layer over and then boom, you have another one, another one to, to test out with a different color or a different material. And your art director will be happy because it doesn't take near as long and he can have you try out things without having to be like, I'm, this is going to be another hour or two before he or she comes back with um, what I'm asking for and see if I like it or if I just wasted time. So masks, wave of the future. Okay, just going around here. I 
I also don't have a tablet I'm using right now, so this is all just being done by the mouse. So some things could be done significantly better if I had my tablet. But since I'm recording and have two screens and a recorder and all this other stuff on my lap, um, I don't have room for the tablet as well at the moment. Okay, so that looks good. Good. Sounds like I got a little bit on that, unfortunately. I'll have to undo that. The one downside of this being an explosion set is I can't paint symmetrically, so um, that makes it to where you know you have to paint both sides, and whatever you do on one side, you have to carry over. I might be able to. No, I thought you might be able to reset your symmetry, but I don't think that's an option in this one. Nope. In the newer versions, you might be able to set your symmetry line, but you can't do it in this one. Okay, I think that arm is done. I'm going to go ahead and paint around the back side here. And unfortunately, this does become a little bit of guesswork in this because you don't really have the collar in place on mine. You might want to maybe have your collar just be attached in and have that baked in versus it being a different model if it becomes too much of a pain in the butt. Um, but I'm going to basically guess where mine is, um, looking at my model and then painting where I think it's at. Auto save for me, real quick. I actually want this one, so I'm gonna click back on this mask, paint that corner back in. There we go. Come back around in the front here, click it back on that one.
that's almost there. Okay, so let's take a look at my really quick and see where this thing's positioned. And I can always adjust where it's actually at, but it looks like it's about right there. Let's see about on Substance Painter. About right there. Okay, so that's almost where it needs to be at. I'm gonna create one more layer because he has like a white undershirt. Now let's make a white undershirt kind of coming across here that way. Um, if need be, if I went a little too high, then the white undershirt will catch that. So let's just duplicate this layer. So I'll just do Control D. I'll duplicate it. Even duplicates the mask. Um, and then I'll just change the color on this one. Actually, let's get rid of the mask. Oop. Uh, so we get click on this one. Get rid of the mask. Oh, I just still got rid of the layer. Clear mask. There we go. And what we want is we want this to be white. Kind of more of a gray white though. Maybe right there. And Underneath the mask here, we want this to show a little bit, so we're going to come straight across right here. So maybe right there will be good. That should be good. And then we'll go back. I just want to add a little bit more color in right there. There we go. Maybe get rid of some of this on the side here. We can even test this out. We can go to File, Export Textures. And remember, we still have some stuff to clean up on the normal, so it still isn't going to be right. But this will help us to where we can say, OK, we're going to export to the folder we already have. Um, and just say Export really quick. It'll go ahead and dump those over into here. So we go back to Maya, go back into the color attribute here, click File, Folder, pick the Albedo Transparency, and say OK, open that. And then it pops in here so we can see right away okay did that work yeah we're pretty close to where we want to be at you know you can see i stopped right there went a little bit too high with the red um, but i can actually pull this object around and make it to where it actually fits good i do have it a little bit too high on the red on the inside here though so i want to erase that part so i can go back into substance painter and say okay you're too high on the sides let's go ahead and just erase some of that off <clears throat> so say okay can i get rid of that right there. Maybe a little bit on this side too then. Okay, there we go. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna continue painting, just get the, the arm done before I finish this, uh, this video off. So I'm gonna go back over here and just basically rinse and repeat what we we're doing over there. Um, I also do have, I think that it's right in here. It's supposed to be hollow right there. So we'll just do the same thing over here. Okay, and then I basically have to go through an outline. So this could be a rinse and repeat. If you guys don't want to watch, you don't have to. You can skip ahead. It's going to be the same thing as I did on the other one. I'm just going to outline this part here. And finish off the shirt. Make this side a little bit smaller. That's good. He 
you see I didn't get quite the right stuff over here so I'm gonna switch back over to my, my denim mask and outline this a little bit more okay back to my red and I can go ahead and add that back in you can also see I like my brushes tilting to match the contour of the model and that's a great thing about substance painter it doesn't just say presume that you want to stay with your perspective camera he wants to follow the geometry Now I can go ahead and just slam in the, the bigger brush the rest of the color. So if I just wanted to come over here and say, all right, all of you comes in here. too much on there. Also undo control Z pretty much a universal undo key for everything even typing programs. Um, so control Z will undo anything you just did just an FYI. Okay. Go ahead and save this one. Save as. It's been a little bit. Team Fortress. And this just saves underneath the Substance Painter Projects directory. Um, don't need to send it somewhere where Maya's been at. Um, this is specific for Substance Painter. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop today. In the next lesson, we'll go through and do the skin for the the head, the arms. And we'll also try to work in the, the belt, metallics. We'll see how far we get. Um, try to get the rest of the body parts taken care of before you start on the accessories. Uh, so thanks for watching. See you guys in the next lesson.